This video will discuss the idea of the linear combination of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals uh, theory for producing molecular orbitals. So we're going to start with some diatomic molecule here. We're particularly interested in homonuclear diatomics, diatomics where each nucleus is the same. So we have nucleus 1 with charge Za+. It has Za number of protons in its nucleus. Nucleus 2, Zb+, plus, for a homonuclear diatomic, Za equals Zb. Those are both arranged on the z-axis, which is the internuclear axis, the axis between our two nuclei. So what we're interested in is building up what the molecular orbitals are going to be for our period 1 and period 2 homonuclear diatomics. So that includes the H2 molecule, helium-2, uh, things that involve the valence shell of having a 1s, and then uh, lithium-2, beryllium-2, boron-2, carbon-2, nitrogen-2, oxygen-2, fluorine-2, and neon-2, the period 2 having a valence shell of 2s and 2p orbitals. So very simply, the idea of LCAOMO is that these atomic orbitals are going to combine so linear combination, just meaning that you're adding them together. Atomic orbitals, meaning our basis set, are going to be the atomic orbitals of each of these individual atoms in this diatomic. And then molecular orbitals, these, this linear combination of our atomic orbitals is going to form the resulting molecular orbitals. So quite simple in qualitative terms. So 1s orbitals are going to overlap those will form our lowest energy orbitals because they're the lowest energy states. One sigma g and one sigma u star. So these are both sigma orbitals. They're cylindrically symmetric down the internuclear axis. Um, I have them mislabeled with respect to gerata and undurata, so let me fix that right now. Much better. I also had the stars messed up. Okay, so we have the positive overlap of 1s orbitals leading to our lowest energy sigma g orbital. This is symmetric with respect to inversion. It's a gerata orbital, so 1 sigma g bonding. We have the anti-symmetric combination of those, which leads to the 1 sigma u star antibonding orbital. It's also a sigma orbital, but it is undurata, anti-symmetric with respect to inversion. And thus it is an, and it's also an antibonding orbital, so it gets a star. The 2s orbitals, which are more diffuse, overlap to form the 2 sigma g and 2 sigma u star orbitals, so bonding, antibonding, symmetric with respect to inversion g, antisymmetric u, but still both sigma orbitals, and they are the second sigma g and sigma u star orbitals to show up. Then we have the 2pz orbitals, which overlap head-on with each other, forming sigma orbitals as we look down the internuclear axis. 3 sigma g and bonding, and 3 sigma u star antibonding, node in the middle, density in the middle. We have uh, symmetric with respect to inversion g, antisymmetric u, and both being sigmas. And finally, we're going to have the 2px and 2py orbitals overlap with one another, and these will form our pi orbitals in the 2p subshell. So these will give us the positive overlap, which will be 1 pi u bonding orbitals. So anti-symmetric with respect to inversion, but it is a bonding orbital, and it is a pi uh, angular momentum. And the anti symmetric combination leading to a node in the middle making a 1 pi g star antibonding orbital. So it is symmetric with respect to inversion but it is an antibonding orbital of pi angular momentum. So these eight kinds of orbitals are going to combine to form our molecular orbital diagram for these homonuclear diatomics which we can use to discuss some more facts about the bonding of these homonuclear diatomic molecules.